This is your shank. These are your balls. Something that um, I think makes it hard is... You should always lube your balls. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking it was only an inch. You know, is that really that big of a deal? And it really is. You really notice it. All right, now I want to talk about sliding your ball into the tongue. 90, 90 seconds, two minutes, you know, we're good. But it's when you're coming in at an angle that it makes it a little bit tricky, and that might take a little bit longer. Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy Michael of Long Long Honeymoon coming at you today with at least six RV hitch tips. Traveling with an RV can be very exciting and fun and rewarding. It could also be incredibly dangerous if you don't get certain things right. So the goal of this video is to really get you thinking about the hitch and hitching up your towable RV to your tow vehicle. These tips can apply in general to a lot of different RVs, but specifically travel trailers, you know, smaller campers, pop-up trailers, teardrops. First of all, you need to adjust the hitch shank so that your travel trailer is not wonky doodle. That's a technical term, <laughs> but you don't want your trailer and your tow vehicle to be wonky doodle. We've all seen people driving down the interstate and either their trailer is, you know, tilted down behind their vehicle or sometimes you see them and they're tilted up behind their vehicle. And that means that their hitch isn't set up properly. And we actually were guilty of that back in the beginning. Ours was very slightly tilted down. And it wasn't something that we really noticed when we were standing up close to it. But when you stand far away, like across the parking lot, that's when you can really notice it. So that's something that I recommend. Stand across the parking lot, stand far away, take a picture and see, you know, is it down in the front, up in the front, or does it look pretty level? If you're just eyeballing it, you can be more specific and measure it. And Vinny Lamica actually did that for us when we were at Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair. At the moment, we're dealing with new wheels and tires. And so Vinny is making sure that everything is properly configured. Now, too low. We too low? Holy fook. If you have a professional that you can consult to set it up the first time, absolutely do it because they do it all the time and they can get it pretty precise. Yeah, if you look at a weight distributing hitch, the nuts and bolts on these things are pretty large and it's really something that's probably best handled by a professional. Vinny actually adjusted our hitch a second time when we got new wheels and tires. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about it, you know, with our Airstream, we switched from 15 inch wheels to 16 inch rims and that altered the height of our Airstream and the, the clearance off the ground. And so Vinny adjusted the hitch so that we have a perfectly level trailer when we're traveling down the highway. And obviously if your trailer is not level, then it's going to affect the handling characteristics of it. So if you change tow vehicles, you know, and the height is a little bit different, that can affect things too. So just keep those things in mind. Well, I usually put my hand like right over the, yeah. the hitch ball and that sort of lets you know where the center is. That's where you're aiming for the middle. <laughs> and so I put that there so you can line up as best as possible with right. that. And then I just sort of slowly tell you to come back, come back, come back. And then I'll tell you to stop for a second when you get about this far from the hitch. I have you stop. And then I sort of look and see, okay, does he need to just keep coming straight back? Does he need to adjust to the left or right a little bit? And then I'll sort of tell you, like, you need to go to the passenger side, just a hair, you know? Or you need to go to the driver's side, just a little bit. And so then when you start backing up, you know that you've got to turn to that left or right, you know, adjustment that I just told you about. Right. And then once you sort of get lined up, 
I'll usually tell you, okay, now you're straight. And that's where you just keep coming back straight. And then I'll just, you know, back, back, back. And then I'll just sort of tell you like how far you are from the hitch. You know, you, you're about this far away, you're about this far away, this far, and then I'll just, you know, inch, inch. And then when I think you're there, I'll lower the trailer. And once, you know, here's the ball of the hitch and here's the trailer. So if it comes down and it couples on, and you know you can see the pressure coming down on the hitch you know that's when I give you the thumbs up sign to let you know okay you can put it in park we're connected all as well it's usually pretty quick you know unless we're in a tricky site where you know things are really not level and the truck is coming in at a weird angle that takes a little longer but if you're somewhere where you can really just line straight up 90, 90 seconds, two minutes, you know, we're good. So here we have a Reese uh, weight distribution bar. Some people call them equalizer bars. So you have one on each side and this transfers a little bit of the weight over to your tow vehicle from, you know, the tongue and the hitch point. So main thing to know about these is you're gonna have to figure out with your particular rig the appropriate tension to have on these chains. Um, the way we do it, we link on our third link in on the chain, but it probably depends very much on your rig and, and your own personal setup. So here we are attaching the weight distribution bars to our airstream. Typically, uh, if there's some tension on these chains, they can require some force to close and so I'll take this little bar and use for leverage so it's always handy to have a tool like this which is technically not sold in any store but you can just use it to pop it down and they'll pop right off when there's tension on it. okay so we're hooking up the weight distribution bars and we've decided that we have three links hanging each time we hook it onto the shackle. So here's a demonstration of how we would improperly hook it where this guy might bind up here. Oh, right. But if we do it to where he's hanging like this, mm -hmm. there's actually three links hanging and you can kind of remember that. Some people might paint this so they can remember which one they hook oh, it to right. maybe if you use it infrequently you're trying to remember just paint the top of this maybe a bright color and then just hang that right there and if sean would hand me the bar i will lift it thank you sean there we go we have those three links hanging they're not obstructing anything put our little lock pin in and this side is ready good Perfect. All right. Ooh, it's dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Number five, inspect the wiring connection cable, the electrical wiring connection cable. So this is the plug that plugs into your tow vehicle that connects for us our brakes and it connects our lights so all of your running lights your brake lights your turn signals and then of course our brakes um, that we can control from the cab of our tow vehicle are all connected through that wire so a lot of times you'll connect it and you'll think oh it's it's in there it's snug everything's good and then you go back to check your turn signals and your brake lights and they aren't working the important thing to do is before you plug it up kind of look in it it has all these little connectors in it <laughs> basically if you get any sort of dirt or debris in any of those it can kind of lose the connection and even if you have it plugged in really snugly it's not going to be giving the signal between your tow vehicle and the trailer so make sure it's clean before you plug it in and then after you plug it in always be sure to have somebody stand behind your your rig before you roll out of your campground or your home and check your brake lights check your turn signals because 
That's an easy way to get an accident. If you have no brake lights and no turn signal, somebody can rear end you real fast. Next tip, use an anti-sway bar or a friction sway bar. Mm -hmm. you can, people call them sway bars, but I think it's really anti-sway bar because you mm -hmm. don't really want sway. Right. There's not much downside to having an anti-sway bar. There could be a lot of upside if it helps you avoid a catastrophic accident. This year in particular, when we were on the road in southern Texas, it's very flat and it is extremely windy this time of year. and. I mean, there were times when, you know, you could feel the gust really kind of whipping you around on the road. That's right. <laughs> In fact, I want to show you what we're talking about here. This is it, friends. See, it's mm -hmm. called friction sway control because it uses friction to reduce sway when sway happens between your trailer and your tow vehicle. Friction sway control. Uh, frankly, this is a fairly cheap part. You can get some really expensive friction sway controls, but uh, you want to loosen this just a bit and uh, just attach the front and the rear like so. Very easy. They slip right on. And then you slip a couple of these little locking pins in at each end. And then we will tighten up the friction sway control and this is uh, where you want to be a little bit like Goldilocks and uh, not too tight, not too loose. You want it just right. And of course, I guess if you, uh, if you tighten it up more, you might get more of that sway control, but you'll hear it creaking as you maneuver around town. And many will suggest that for the best results when backing up your trailer, that you should remove the friction sway control. And that certainly makes sense. At the very least, you should probably loosen it, but uh, it, it's probably best practice to remove it. Because they can potentially get bent, and I'm afraid that was the fate of our first sway bar, which was a Reese model. This is a cheaper anti-sway bar. We've been using this for about three years. We got this for less than 40 bucks. And if you need one of these, we will put a link to the less than 40 buck model uh, in the description for this video. But it looks and functions identical to the more expensive model. And again, it's, it's just cheap insurance. For 40 bucks, why wouldn't you have an anti-sway bar? Because it, sway can be terrifying. We really haven't experienced much in all of our travels with our Airstream, and I think a key reason is we've always had an anti-sway bar from day one, and we've always had it attached any time we've been towing it. All right, the old ball and chain. I mean, the chains. Um, we want to cross these chains, you see? Cross them. So number three, cross your safety chains. A lot of people have chains, and if you know what we're talking about, they hook in to either side of your hitch onto your tow vehicle. So instead of putting them straight on, you're going to cross them underneath the hitch. Why do you do that? Because if your trailer happened to pop off the ball, heaven forbid, if you were going straight, then hopefully those cross chains would at least catch it until you can slow down and stop. And along those lines, ideally, you don't want those chains dragging on the ground as you go down the highway. So they need to be height adjusted too. Now, one technique that some will use is to twist the chains, but others will say if you twist those chains, you are reducing their strength. So you might bear that in mind. Ideally, you really want chains that are the appropriate length for your trailer and tow vehicle so they don't drag the ground. So this is the breakaway switch, and hopefully you will never use this. This is sort of your last chance if your trailer was to come loose off of the ball and be free. When the trailer pulls away from your tow vehicle, this switch should get pulled out and your brakes are activated. And this is what we call the breakaway cable, okay? And you can see we do not have an accordion cable. We have a good old fashioned straight cable, courtesy of Vinnie Lamica. Mm -hmm. This guy has to be able to pivot. 
-hmm. So the, the, the code says that if, if this guy is like here and he's tightened down and you pull the pin, then it's possible that you could break the pin rather than pull the pin. So they want this loose so that it will pull this over and out. These two points close. One is 12 volts from the battery. The other one is the feed out to the wheels. So this would allow battery voltage to go right to all four of your braking drums. The trailer would lock up. When that happens, it wants to pull back straight. And then these chains would catch the disconnected trailer and you would just skid to a controlled stop. It would be highly exciting, but still controlled versus not having this. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this guy, in this case, through your receiver uh, where the chain hooks. Now, we're doing this because this is we don't really have any other option. If we were to hook it around the bumper, which is another good place, then it would be nice to keep it right here rather than sliding from side to side because you don't want to go into a turn and inadvertently pull this pin and simulating a disconnect and then have problems from that. So there are some folks that actually have a little hook on the bumper someplace, uh, an eyelet that this can wrap through uh, and then that's another separate point of, of, um, of some place on the chassis rather than the hitch itself uh, during, a, during a disconnect. Then it's unlikely that this would fall off and this would fall off. At least your brakes would apply during a disconnect. Okay, so number two, you want to make sure your emergency trailer breakaway cable is the correct length and type. We see a lot of people with these little accordion style breakaway cables. And if you have one of those and you got lots of play in it, then it's pointless because by the time your trailer has broken away, it's going to be so far behind your rig when it finally pulls the cable that bad things will have already really happened. So you want it to be tight enough to where if it just goes, you know, a few, you know, six inches, like just popped off the ball, the brake is going to hit. And we talked about this with Vinny when we were visiting him uh, this last year. And he said that's one of the number one things he tries to get people away from are those little accordion style cables. And people like them because they look neat and tidy and they stay out of the way and they look nice. But at the end of the day, they do nothing for you. All right, so here's our breakaway cable. Typically, we link this through the rear of our truck back to the trailer and we have it locked down uh, with the latch here. And so this is the total length of breakaway cable between our trailer and our tow vehicle. So not very much. You can see it's about, I don't know, 18 inches, 24 inches, something like that. So, cause you really don't want something that stretches out 10 feet <laughs> because the longer that cable has to stretch, the more bad things can happen. So get yourself a straight little emergency cable, hook it up the right way. Heaven forbid, if your trailer came disconnected from the ball, your brake would hit fairly soon after that happened. It wouldn't be, you know, four or five feet behind your rig before that brake hits. All right, now I wanna talk about sliding your ball into the tongue. And now the number one RV hitching tip for today anyway, make sure you've got the full weight of your trailer onto the hitch ball before you lock it down. Now I think we have a pretty standard old school arrangement with our Airstream. On the front of the tongue, you will find this latch. And on our latch, there are actually instructions printed on it to open slide forward and pull up open latch before inserting ball so slide forward pull up and then when it's time to lock it boom just give it a little bit of pressure slide forward pull up it's open so now we're ready to hitch easy peasy all right so that's unlocked and that is locked you can see there's a locking mechanism inside the tongue receiver. Unlocked, locked. So that will come down 
and sort of fits right around the hitch ball. So it's very, very important that you have the hitch ball all the way up inside the tongue before you lock it. And you really want the tongue to be taking all the weight. Locked. It is actually possible to rest your trailer on top of the hitch ball and lock it without securely fastening it to the ball. And if you do that, basically you'll be riding around with the tongue not firmly just attached sort of to the ball. Barely it's not going to be locked in, you know, it's just going to be sort of sitting on top of it. And this absolutely does happen. It's easy, easy, easy to do. You might not even notice it mm -hmm. and it can absolutely cause a terrible accident. Something that um, I think makes it hard is it is possible to lock down your, your coupling pin, I guess is what you call it, and put your little, you know, bolt through your lock and think, oh, it's, it's secure. But if you haven't taken the full weight of your trailer off the foot jack when you are, you know, pairing the two, then you don't know for sure that the trailer is all the way down on the ball. You see what I'm saying? Like it could be sort of sitting up here and when it locks, it's gonna lock between the ball and the trailer. So you wanna make sure the trailer is all the way down on it. So when it locks, it's locking around that ball. Note, there's another warning printed on the tongue. Warning, retract jack fully before towing. And this again goes to the point. You want the jack all the way back up underneath the hitch tongue and you really need to have that done before you lock the latch down onto the ball, okay? Because that way you know the ball is firmly secured inside the tongue. Yeah, it's critically important and I think every year there are some terrible accidents that happen because the trailer simply has not been firmly, securely attached to the hitch ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you pair that with windy roads or high winds or really anything going over railroad tracks we have a family friend that that happened to with his boat you know he he hitched in the dark and thought it was completely on there and went over some railroad tracks not far from his house and his boat came off the hitch and thank goodness his chains were crossed it caught it but you know it happens all right, let's talk about your balls. You should always lube your balls. And look, there's nothing worse than dry balls, which is what we have here. So <laughs> these balls are screaming for lube. Like a molly grease. And then I just do like a dog poop bag or something. When I'm not using it, I put it over that. Oh, you put it over the ball? Yeah, so I don't get it on my pant leg. Yeah, because we'll, we'll get that. <laughs> Dude, uh -huh. you're going to be cussing me before you get to wherever. So that's it, guys. At least six tips which relate specifically to hitching an RV. If you're out there towing around five or 10,000 pounds, you want to make sure that all of that weight is secured to your tow vehicle in the safest manner possible. You know, this is really critically important because probably the most dangerous aspect of RV travel is that getting from point A to point B, <laughs> really. Sure. And I have to say, don't be embarrassed to ask for help. We do it all the time because we bought our rig used. So we literally just walked in, signed some papers and drove away. There was no one there to show us anything. We had no idea what we were doing. And we're still learning today and it's been 10 years. So anytime you meet somebody that is a professional in this RV you know, world and deals with you know, hitching a lot or that sort of thing, ask for advice because you might learn something even though you've been doing it a long time. We learn stuff all the time. If you can find somebody that is an RV professional that actually RVs themselves. That's the way to go. That's why we like Vinny so much because he is an Airstreamer himself. And so he knows what it's really like 
out in the real world and, you know, get somebody to walk you through all the steps. Show them how you hitch and then have them say, okay, you're doing this right, but you need to do this differently. And it can save your life. That's right. I mean, most people who get an RV have little to no instruction. <laughs> And that's true of all of us. Yeah. So that's really the whole point of many of these videos. It's to share with you some of what we've learned. And also we want to throw it out to you guys. What have you learned about hitching an RV? Can you share something in the comments on this video that would help our community better understand the hitch and the hitching process when you're dealing with a towable RV and improve everyone's safety on the road? Because that is the idea here. Yeah, I'm sure somebody out there has something that will be new information to us and we'll learn. And so please share that information. If you have a question that we haven't answered, ask it and we'll do our best to find the answer if we don't know it ourselves. So that's what we're here for. <laughs> All right. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you are new here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're cranking out fresh videos weekly. It's like a donut shop around here. <laughs> every day, fresh videos. Well, maybe not every day, well. but every week, <laughs> fresh videos. Yeah. So if you also enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment to say hello. It means a lot to us to hear from you guys. And we hope you guys have a great week. And like always, lo lo ho. Lo -ho. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. name this thing. Are you in junior high still and you didn't tell me? I don't know what you're talking about. Ball, tongue, shank. These are very professional terms.